Michelle Gay. And today I am going to be doing the second part of a series on energy. I am collaborating with the NEED Foundation. NEED stands for National Energy Education Development Project. You can go to their website where you can download free resources where you can do the same hands-on experiments that I'm going to demonstrate throughout this series at need.org, N-E-E-D.org. All right, well today we're going to be doing our second video on endothermic and exothermic processes. Before we start, let's talk about energy again. All right, we're talking about kinetic energy. We kind of spoke about potential energy and kinetic energy. We know that with potential energy, it is energy that is stored. Energy that, energy that we have not used yet, but it's stored energy waiting there to be used. And then there's our kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy that is released, energy, energy that we use. Let's look at kinetic energy, energy that is released. We have different types of energy that is released. For instance, we have motion. We use motion energy every day when we're walking, we're talking, we're chewing, we're eating, we're listening. We're using our motion. A car is moving down the road. And I'm sure you can come up with many more examples. Then we have sound energy. Sound energy is what we use when we're listening. All right? Radiant energy. It is electromagnetic energy that travels in transverse waves and our largest source of radiant energy is the sun, the natural energy that we use every day. Like for me, when I go outside, I love to sit in the sun so I can absorb that vitamin D, which is really good for all of us to have. Then we have electrical energy, all right? Of course, you know that when we plug something into the socket, a cord into the socket, and then we turn that lamp on, the circuit begins to flow. And so that's the electrical energy, and energy begins to transform from one type of energy to the other. For instance, with electrical energy, it can transform from electrical energy to thermal energy if you're getting heat off of that source. All right, and then we have thermal energy. Thermal energy is when something is hot, when we're feeling the heat of it. All right, today on part two on endothermic and exothermic, we're going to do calcium chloride and water to test out thermal energy. Remember, endothermic is heat that is in. Exothermic is heat that is going out. So if we have heat coming into something, that's what's going to feel warm. Heat that's going out, then that's going to feel cool to something or to someone. I want you to come up with a hypothesis. I want you to think about what will happen if we add calcium chloride and water together. What do you think will happen to the temperature? Let's get started. Here are the materials we will need. We will need calcium chloride. We need a thermometer. We need bags and we need water. We're going to use 10 milliliters of water and four cubic centimeters to the third of calcium chloride. We're going to put 10 milliliters of water in the bag. Now, teachers, at this point, once the students have their water in the bag, let them observe the water by touching and feeling and talk maybe in their group or whole group. How does the temperature or how does the water feel just by touch? And, and see what they think and maybe even ask them questions about which process do they think right now is occurring as they touch it. Do they think this is endothermic or do they think this is exothermic? All right, 
Next, we're going to add our thermometer and take the temperature. Now, before I do that, now remember, it's at 70 degrees. We're gonna place this in and let it sit for a moment. Okay, the temperature is about 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. The next part, we're going to add in our calcium chloride. We're adding the calcium chloride and we're going to leave the thermometer in the bag, teachers. So carefully pour it in. And we're going to wait approximately 30 seconds. And then we're going to take the temperature again. But now at the same time, have your students observe and they can feel the water and see what it feels like and record their observations. Okay, so the first temperature we took and we made an observation Students should have written that first uh, temperature down, which was 73. Now, after it sat in here for about 30 seconds and maybe a little bit more, our temperature has rose to approximately 84 degrees. Have your students write this observation down next. Now we're going to remove the thermometer and we're going to seal the bag. Now one of the things I wanna note here, teachers, is that this is not a chemical reaction. Um, the calcium chloride dissolves, just like if you would put um, sugar into water or salt into water. Now, after the bag is sealed, go ahead and have your students make an observation again. Some questions you may ask your students does the bag feel, does the water feel warmer? Is the temperature going up? Is the temperature going down? Also, you can have them discuss at this point, is this an exothermic process or an endothermic process? And when I'm doing something like this with my students, I like to walk around and uh, listen to them. And I also have them record their observation. Uh, with, the, uh, with need.org, you do get a book. And in this book, you do have a page that they can complete and record all their information. So that would be a great resource to have them use. So I'm not going to say exactly what's going on right now, but uh, the temperature does feel different. All right, teachers, so now that your students have taken time to discuss and talk about their observation, they should have observed uh, that the temperature continued to rise and eventually it cools down as it sits longer. One of the things that you can go over now is, you know, ask the students, was your hypothesis correct? Uh, or did, your, did you think that it was gonna get warmer or did you think it was gonna get cooler? All right, and then discuss with the students about exo and endothermic process again and see what the students come up with, that it is an exothermic process, heat going out, and when you touch the bag, they should have felt the heat in their fingers. Calcium chloride is used in everyday life of places where it snows or where there's ice on the road and they need to get it up, they use cal calcium chloride to, um, to dissolve the, um, the ice. So one of the things you can do is make an extension of this and have one bag with an ice cube and some of the calcium chloride. Now, I just put this in here about 30 seconds ago and uh, it's already melting the ice cube. And then you can also put an ice cube in another bag and compare the two as they dissolve and let the students time which one dissolves the fastest and why and record their observations. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you're a student or a child who's watching this video without an adult, Please do not do this experiment at home without supervision. Remember, safety is always first. 
you know, use goggles if you have them. Do not put anything near your mouth unless the experiment tells you to taste it. And also do not smell anything unless the experiment tells you. All right, we're going to wrap this up. I have enjoyed doing today's experiment on calcium chloride and water. And teachers, I hope that you're able to use this in your classroom. You can use this video as a demonstration or just look at it and see how you can incorporate this into your classroom. Remember, science is fun and science can be easy and students can gain so many concepts just from doing a simple experiment like this. I hope to see you next time on my channel. My name is Michelle Gay. Michelle, science teacher, is my YouTube channel, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Have a great and wonderful, blessed day.